Hey folks, in today's video, I wanna show you how to implement a memory cache in a .NET API. A memory cache is a great way of caching data in your application that is small and frequently used. For example, in my last video, I did a demo on how to do role-based authorization. And when doing role-based authorization, you have to get the roles of the user on every single API call. So every single time that person calls their API, you have to go get the roles and make sure that they can do the things that they're trying to do. And this is a great use case for a memory cache. And essentially what a memory cache is doing is it's taking a key value pair, storing it into a dictionary, and then it's going to set an expiration time on it so that it can expire in five seconds or five hours or five days, however long you think is an appropriate time to store that information. How long you store that mostly depends on how frequently it will change. Let's go ahead and add a memory cache into this demo application that I have. First thing to do is to add the NuGet package. And we're going to search for microsoft.extensions.caching.memory. And I'm going to go ahead and add that into my API. And then we need to tell our application to use it. So in your program file, go ahead and add this line, which is builder.services.addMemoryCache. And now we can begin implementing this cache. So in my example, I'm going to add it into this user service. And a really quick recap of what this is doing is it's going to take in an email address of a user and it's going to call this method, which is my fake database call. And it's going to retrieve the user based off of their email address. And it's going to return the list of roles that that user has. And in my fake database call here, I have a delay of 200 milliseconds. And just for the sake of this demo, I'm actually gonna increase that to 2000. So it's a two second delay. So we can see how this actually helps with not only performance, but also with database calls. So the first thing we need to do is we need to inject that memory cache into our class here. So on the constructor, I'm going to inject iMemoryCache and I'm just going to call it cache and then I'll go ahead and add a read-only field for that. The first thing to do is to check to see if we have this information in our cache already. So like I said, the cache uses a key value pair. In this case, I'm just going to go ahead and use the email as my key. So to get the information from the cache, we'll say var roles equals cache dot get and then we are going to type this in my case for roles it's going to be a list of strings and then we'll just pass in the email this get is just going to ask for the key of the object that we're going to get which in our case we're going to say is email and then we'll just say if the roles is not null then we're just going to return roles and this is the beauty of these memory caches is if we have the roles in our memory then we don't have to make this database call in our case, I'm faking it, making it a two second call, which obviously if you have a two second call for your database call, you should probably try and fix that first. But you can see how this is going to add up over time and reduce not only database calls, but also the latency in your API calls for getting this information. In the case where it's not already in our memory cache, we want to go get it. Here, I'm already returning the data. So instead, I'm just going to say roles equals go and get the information. And then once we get those roles back, we want to set that in our memory cache. And to do that, you're going to say cache.set. And the first thing you're going to give it is the key, which in our case was email address. And then we're going to give it the object, which is roles. And then there's a couple different overloads for this method, but the one that I'm going to use is just going to tell it how long to keep this in memory. So I'm going to say time span from seconds. And for this demo, I'll just do it for five seconds for now. And then lastly, return roles. And this time span that I'm adding in right here is just telling it how long to keep this stuff in memory. And how long you keep things in memory depends on how frequently that thing changes. For this demo, I'm just gonna show it as five seconds so I can show you how quickly this comes back. But it all depends on your situation. It could be five seconds, five minutes, five days. You know, it's all just up to you. I will show you later how you can remove an item from the cache so that if you do update it, you can actually go ahead and remove it and re-add it and update it. But just keep in mind that the memory cache is going to keep track of how long things are in that cache and it's going to automatically remove them for you after that time expires. I have added a couple of console.write lines in here just to make it a little bit more obvious. So I have one here that says that the roles were found in the cache, which means they're going to be returned immediately. And then one right after that is that they're not found, so we're going to retrieve it from the database. And then finally that they were added into the cache. This user roles method is getting called from my claims middleware. So if I make an authenticated call, this is going to get run. So I'm gonna go ahead and test that and we'll make sure this is working. And now from my Swagger page, I can go ahead and I can log in. And I'm going to call this admin endpoint, which is just an endpoint that requires that my user has an admin role on it. I'm also going to shrink this up so we can see the terminal. So what should happen is the first time I run this, it's going to take, I think two or five seconds to retrieve that information. And then when I call it again, it's going to be immediate. 
And we'll also see that in the output down here. So if I go ahead and execute this, you can see roles not found in the cache fetching from the database, roles added. So if I execute right away, roles found in cache, and you can see that came back instantly. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm going to turn this again and I'll run it immediately after this and you can see it'll be instant. So instant, 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 instant. And now it's going to, we have to wait for that to come back. And I can see how beneficial this can be for performance of your application. So not only am I not waiting for those roles to come back, but also we're not hitting the database. So the database isn't working as hard either. And I mentioned before, it's kind of up to you to determine how long you want to keep these things in your memory. And one of the biggest determining factors for that is how often it changes or how long you're okay with your data being stale. But let's just say, for example, that this is five hours. So if I say from hours of five, then this would be stored for five hours. Well, what happens if a user's roles get changed? Well, that would mean that this data could be old for up to five hours. There's a couple things you can do. So let's imagine that we have another endpoint that is to set roles. Here's just a really quick example. So let's say we have a method to set the roles for a given user. Well, you would have something that would say, you know, go update the database, but you'd also want to update your cache. And the two options you have for your cache is you can either just remove that entry altogether and then you can let it get picked up the next time it gets used, or you can just reset it from here. And both of those are pretty easy. If you want to remove it, it's just cache.remove and then you just give it the key that you want to remove and that's going to remove it for you. And if you do this, it'll get removed and then it'll get picked up the next time it gets used down here. The other option is you can call the same thing that you do down here and you can just set the email and the roles and the time span down here. It's up to you how you want to do it. One other consideration for this memory cache is what you use for the key. And why that's important is that key is shared across this memory cache in the entire application. For example, in ours, we're using the email address as the key for uh, our memory cache. Let's say, for example, that somewhere else in the application you want to add a cache for a uh, user's information or something like that, and the key for that is also the email. Well, those are going to conflict with each other. So if you store it with an email with the roles, it's going to get overwritten when you write it with the email address for the information. If that's a concern for you, one thing you can do is just prefix all of your keys. So for example, you could just say, um, you know, user roles and then you know dot or colon or just whatever you want to do for that. And then you'd have to use that in all of the places where you go set and add that information. So you would need to make sure you prefix that on your git and on your set and up here on your remove. So that's something else to keep in mind for these caches. That's pretty much it in terms of implementing that cache. There are a few things in this documentation that Microsoft does warn about, and one of those is obviously since it's an in-memory cache, how big that cache gets is going to use up the memory of whatever you're running that application on. For example, if you have this application running on a server that has, let's say, four gigs of RAM on it, you don't want to use up all four gigs of those RAM for your cache. So there are ways that you can set the limit and the size of that cache. They go over all that in the documentation. I'm not going to cover that in this video, but if you're interested in seeing that, let me know. I could do another video on that. But if that is a concern for you, go check out the documentation on how to limit that size. If you have any questions, put them in the comments down below. I'll try to get back to you. And thanks for watching, and I'll catch you later.